Jenny's Arena and you're welcome once again. This is where we hear stories of people who have achieved business success, career success, life in general tips that will help develop ourselves. So stay tuned. For today, I am sharing my story. I completed secondary school 2015 and I didn't apply for tertiary school the same year. So I was working all throughout this time and I decided that I'll go the following year. I was just there doing my rounds working. But before then I had applied to UCC to go and study business related program. Okay. And so I was just there. And I had an anonymous call that, Hey, hello, is this Jennifer? I said, yes, please. And they said, come to Megis to pick up your forms to apply to a scholarship for tertiary education. I said, okay, when and all of that. I was at the end of the call. I was so surprised. Like how, how did they know I was still at home? How? Well, so I picked up the form and I filled it, did the necessary, and I was called for an interview. At the interview point, I was told I'm going to be offered a program, publishing studies. Yes, the scholarship was an automatic um, entry level. You know, KNUSD has this list of less endowed schools that my school happened to be one and they give free admission for that so i was giving publishing studies for that scholarship so at the interview grounds i was like no i don't want publishing i want a business at least business administration and they said we'll see so at the end of the interview i decided in my mind that i'm not going to come here because that course i haven't even heard of it before i don't know what it is I don't know what they do. I don't know, like what, when I went to search on it, the things I saw, I said, what? No, I can't do this program. How? No, me, I can't. So I totally condemned the program in my head that no, I won't do it. So I was just focusing and waiting for my UCC to come. And lo and behold, UCC came and I had the course I chose, you see, and I was very happy, but though in, in the real state, it's not that we are, ha we have the financial standing to be able to cater for everything in the school. By then my father was a pensioner, so it was kind of tough with financial issues. If I tell you the story of how they managed to pay the fees for that UCC. It's a whole interesting story, but we did. So I went to UCC and it was an interesting journey. I, I loved the environment. People were like, oh, UCC is so tough, like rules and regulation. They are like, UCC, they will come and inspect bed sheets. They will come and so many funny, funny comments about UCC. But when I went there, it was interesting. It was nice, yeah. Uh, I was at Atlantic Hall and it was interesting that's that hall is like Katanga oh my god we really saw things those scary things funny things I, I enjoyed myself though I quite remember one I think I'm deviating but let me say a, a brief one quite remember one they turned off the light in the whole hall and they were moving up and down with some I don't know whether they were doing Yankomadi or what like it was so scary first first week was the second week very very scary it's like girls girls are in the compound doing a whole lot of things but at the end of the day it was we, we went back to our normal days anyway and my roommates i really loved my roommates i it was it felt like we were going to be very tight it was i saw the future was bright yeah the four of us we were four in the room i'm actually still in contact with one rosie shout out yeah and going to study too but one challenge i had at ucc was um you know 
like I said, financial issues. It wasn't easy. So not having a laptop and phone, Android knows also So the phone, you'll be given an assignment where to type it. I mean, research work, so many research work. So many research work for UCC. Okay, let me mention the program. I was going to study BCom accounting, yeah. So, so many research work. It's like my head was even bashing with so many things that need to, you need to buy this, you need to buy that, um, textbooks and all of that. And the l'argent de vous wasn't there. But I said, what? As far as we are here, we'll try our best and make it happen. So I was walking to lectures and I received a call. Hello, is this Jennifer Nabil Kologo? I said, yes, please. And they were like, you've gained the scholarship to come and study at KMST. That is MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program. And I said, please, what program? And she said, publishing studies. Remember, I said I was not going to study that program. No, no. I said, no, no for me. Hey, Jennifer, that people know that, hey, Charlie, accounting, shadow, and things, and business, blah, blah, blah. Then I go and study publishing. I, nobody have even heard of that before. And, and immediately, I just responded, please, please, I can't, I wouldn't be able to come. I've gone to UCC already. I can't study the program. And... She, the person said okay thank you i think i don't even think i told my father that they called so i was just there and my father called me that well, the people have called him that have gotten the scholarship to uh with KNUST. and i said yes they called me but i said i'll come my father said okay so what are we going to do and it's, i don't know it's like they called they called my father to say hey You've gotten such an opportunity. You have money, eh? You have money, mom. You've gotten such an opportunity for your daughter to study for free with stipend, with laptop, everything free. And you, you said you won't come. And, and I don't know. I think my father told them he would get back. Or I don't, I don't remember what exactly transpired between them. And so I was there. My cousin called, advised me that, hey, First degree is not all that it takes. You don't need to pressure yourself on what program to study on. I need to do accounting. Even in the job market, such courses, it's not easy to thrive. It's not easy to get a job and a whole lot. And even you can still do chartered accountancy. There are so many ways you can still accomplish the accounting after your first degree. And I said, hmm. So he talked a whole lengthy and wise talk and my brother's fiance also spoke to me but she's now a wife though she spoke to me and she advised me also and i had all the advices as for my father he didn't pressure me at all he didn't pressure me he was just waiting for my decision he knows that it's not easy for him but he, he believes in what i want so he, he didn't talk much uh -huh. but the rest the my cousin and my brother's fiance gave me wise um counsel about the reality on the ground with career and i said okay so i just went to my bed in fact i didn't tell anybody i didn't tell any friend no i told one friend he also told me that come on i should go for it i should go for it he also advised me upon all the advice i went to my bed lied down crying bitterly and praying that oh god it is not because i don't have money to pay all the fees and all the necessaries that i need to finish my tertiary education i should go and do a course that i can't do or a course that i've never dreamt or thought about but lord you let your will be done let your will be done because after all this life is not my own you know what i am supposed to be and what i will become so lord have your way take charge I, even though i've told the scholarship people that i'm not taking the offer lord if it is your will 
I pray in Jesus' name that if we call them, let them accept me again. My cousin told me that I should still go to the school and find out. I should go to the school and, and so that they will know that I'm indeed serious, that I'm coming back. So I went to KNOST. That is without my luggage. My luggage was still at UCC. I went to KNOST to check on the scholarship again for the registration. And so when I got there, I was directed to, uh, to the place where they were registering the, I think the rooms or the, yeah, they were registering the rooms. And when I got there, the list that they were working on, my name wasn't part of the list. And I realized that they, then they called the secretariats that were handling the process and they told them and they said, oh, they should add, they should write my name uh -huh, because someone didn't come. And they knew I was coming back. I think we called to tell them that I'm coming. Uh -huh. So they, my name was replaced. So upon seeing that um, interaction with those people that my name wasn't there, I realized that in the first place, my name was actually canceled. And after I told them that I am coming before they were making arrangements for me, my name to be placed. And there was actually a gap and I was able to still come back. Is it not God? This is very evident that what God wants to do, he will do it. You just have to consult him and pray about it. Exactly what I prayed about that God, if it is your will, then when I call them, let them accept me back. And that is it. So I, after that, I went back to UCC. That was when I told my colleagues that I'm moving out, I'm going to KNUSD. And I think I didn't even explain that I'm not going to do, like I didn't explain my struggles or my pain. I just, I was just cool. I was just cool. I didn't explain it to my roommates. No, I just said I had to, I had a scholarship and I need to move back to KNUSD. Yeah. So, I moved, that was how I moved from UCC to KNUSD. I actually stayed in UCC for about a month, almost getting to UCC matriculation. Very, very close. I think the day I left, the following day was the matriculation. So my name was actually in the matriculation book. I didn't go to the UCC um, registrar or something to cancel my name i didn't do anything of that we were thinking of maybe going for refund but because they have already mentioned that no refund so i just left without any notice yeah i just left like that yeah and i came to KNUST. my people in fact i have never ever regretted joining the scholarship program and even the program i did publishing studies never regretted since i did it no the only times i had tough moments was the beginning month at that beginning i was still the first week when i went back to KNUSD, i was still trying to change the program i went back and forth with the secretariat that they should change my program and they're like no because business administration i have to go for fee paying if they should change my program but the, and they, they don't take fee paying so they, it's not going to be possible and so i managed and then i went for lectures in the beginning like i said it wasn't easy for the let's say for the first month or maybe the first thing the first semester but at, at uh, upon finishing even not even finishing in the middle of the program i realized wow jennifer you have been you were locked up in one angle but this program broadened my mind it opened my mind i was i be, i began to think broadly because at, at first i was so in one corner accountant accountant and accountant but this one it's it's it gave me dreams it gave me entrepreneurship it gave me so many scope it gave me so many perspectives and dimensions of career that I am now dreaming to pursue. And it's exciting. The future is exciting, I'm telling you. Yeah. So for the scholarship, dear my sister, my brother, 
when I tell you I haven't enjoyed, then I'm lying to you. Hey, the only problem is that my body does not glorify the program. That's for that one day. I'm still like this, uh, but ideally my body should have, I should have been like this. Because, hey, the scholarship is, mwah, mwah, mwah. hey, it's like they are paying you to go to school. Host, even the hostel we slept in is a stack that's a, a rich, rich people's hostel. It's an international student hostel, Brunei. And I actually slept at Complex, the nicest one. You, you see that thing? <laughs> yeah. So it was beautiful, a beautiful experience. I had free laptop and they were giving us stipend every month uh -huh. so it was marvelous and we were also giving lunch let me take my time and break it down the benefits of this scholarship accommodation free stipend every single month as at my time we were taking 400 cities but they are now taking 600 cities also and uh, lunch every evening lunch i mean every evening it doesn't miss a, a single day no every single evening um stationary all you have to do is to be a faithful servant the money you take you account for it that i bought this i bought that using a receipt and then you also get free laptop free funya 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 even when you compete it's still with you I still have my door is spot. Yeah. So you see, the, the scholarship was mwah. I enjoyed every bit of bit of it and the opportunities in there. Opportunities in there. Out of the scholarship. Now I went to a, a friend is saying Kimpiski Hotel. Yeah. <laughs> oh that is just a lighter part of it. And I managed to go to Rwanda for a program. And some people are actually enjoying a whole lot of opportunities from this scholarship. Some of us are yet to tap some, but some have really catapulted from zero to hero. And from my end, what I have achieved so far, I'm so grateful to God. In fact, I'm very grateful to God. I don't regret anything. Even this program that I studied, I got a job right after service. I mean, I didn't even sleep at home for an inch. You understand? So, that is what God can do. You just have to follow his ways. And I'm, I'm glad I chose this path. I never regret it. And this is my story. Yeah. So, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have learned something. You are inspired. Whatever you are doing, don't even care. Don't mind that your friends will laugh at you. In fact, at a point, I felt shy that I wasn't doing a course that my friends thought I would be doing. Uh -huh. But in my mind, I knew, Pan say, Phil, I didn't feel. But it's God that directed my path to uh, the way he wants it to go. And it has been good so far. Good so far. And I know there are better days ahead, for sure. So, keep up and keep being motivated. Just focus on God. He will direct your ways. On that note, I'm ending my story here. But I'm telling you, there are going to be a lot of stories that we are going to hear from people. How they manage to create their unique business. How they manage to gain their career goals and a whole lot of stories that will develop our lives. I need you to stay tuned as we develop our lives together so we reach the top. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.